signs of spring in Britain's most famous garden. Kew has been around for more than 250 years, and the warm weather is encouraging flowers, visitors, and wildlife to come out. There's more here at the Royal Botanical Gardens than just beautiful flowers and unique plants. Experts are working on conservation, species protection, and even looking for new cures for malaria. A lot of that happens here at the Jodrell Laboratory. The gardens are famous for their collections. Here in the herbarium, hundreds of thousands of dried plant specimens from around the world, some of them collected by Charles Darwin and David Livingston. Peter Gasson is leading this part of the tour. Never turn herbarium specimens over like a book because everything is sitting up on the surface here. So all the way up you've got these drawers. In another lab, more specimens kept in special cold freezers. This is DNA of plants that cannot be dried or that James Clarkson and other Q scientists are working on. Each tube um, contains about one mil of DNA and each one of these um, tubes represents, in general, represents a different species. So approximately 38,000 um, plant species in here. It takes a week to extract the DNA. Once finished, it is available to researchers all over the world. Mark Chase heads the Jodrell Laboratory. He uses DNA to study orchids. Plants are a way for us to protect ourselves from the worst effects of climate change. In order to do that effectively, you have to understand a lot about their genetics and uh, the attributes of the plants. Kew's Tropical Nursery is home to some of the rarest plants in the world. It is the garden's biggest greenhouse and is usually closed to the public. The various types of plants are kept in different climate-controlled zones that mimic their natural environment. Monique Simmons is head of Kew's Sustainable Uses of Plants group. Plant habitats are really uh, facing uh, severe pressures on them with changing land use, with increasing populations, etc. The need to feed people, to be able to provide fuel, etc. results in a loss of habitat and therefore the loss of biodiversity. Saving endangered plants is another of Kew Garden's missions, and horticulturalist Carlos Magdalena is spearheading the effort. He's helped save this plant from extinction, a bluebell from Mauritius. This is not just a plant which is pretty, it's a plant which is uh, almost gone from, from the planet. As a student, he figured out how to hand pollinate this wild coffee plant, once thought to be extinct. There now are dozens of these plants at Kew, and Magdalena and his colleagues are working to create the conditions to return it to Rodriguez, the island in the Indian Ocean it came from. Despite these successes, Magdalena says his work is a constant race against time. The size of the problem is, is huge. And, and despite of focusing into this, uh, we are bound to, to end up losing biodiversity. So that's why it's very important to try to work against that tide of destruction and extinction, because otherwise it's going to be much bigger. In this UN-declared year of biodiversity, Kew Gardens is trying to make the public more aware of the perils that plants face and their importance in the world. Jennifer Glass for VOA News, Kew Gardens, England.